Okay, hello everyone. My name is Tiffany Tijerina. Welcome to the June community meeting. Um, we do expect this to be a small meeting because many of our usual attendees are actually busy with summer stuff as I'm sure you guys are too. Uh, but on behalf of the steering committee who many of us are here today, we are so, so excited that you guys were able to join us for today's meeting. Um, let's talk about agenda. So for today's agenda, we're going to start with some mentee setup. Um, we'll talk through how to get you guys set up in the mentee so that you can give us feedback and participate in the meeting. And then we will go through some organizing process updates. So we do have some updates on the uh, planning process for the conference for you guys. And then we'll have some questions for feedback from you guys. So to get us started, um, the, here's how we set up Menti. So if you've never been to a meeting before, or if you have and just uh, need the steps to get set up again, um, the first thing that's important to know is just it's Menti works a lot better if you use a separate browser or use your phone or your tablet to open it up. Um, that way you're not having to flip back and forth between browser windows. Um, so you have a couple of options. You can go to menti.com and enter the code 5477378. Um, and that will get you into our menti and ready to provide feedback. Or uh, Nicole has put a direct link in the chat for you guys. You can also click on that and that will get you in. Um, there's also a mobile app. If you have, uh, if you have the mobile app or um, feel like downloading it, the um, you can use the same code there. Uh, you can move forward. So once you get into the Menti, um, tell us where you're joining from. So give us your US state, your Canadian province, or your country if you're not in the US or Canada. Um, and wherever you're from, welcome to the meeting. We're really excited to have you here. So I see we have Rhode Island, Quebec, Tennessee, New York, Colorado, Bo. I don't know where that is. Where's Bo? Um, USA, Colorado. Did I already say that? California. New York is the biggest. That means we have multiple people from New York. Georgia, Alberta. I'm in Georgia too. That's where I'm from. Well, that's actually where I live. It's not where I'm from. Great. Okay, I think we're ready to move forward. I don't see any more movement. And we'd love to know what you're doing this summer. So we are into summer, it's June, and I'm sure you guys are doing either really exciting stuff, really busy stuff, or just like relaxing because that's what summer's for. <laughs> um, so I'd love to know what you guys are doing this summer. For me, I'll tell you, I am taking a class and am relaxing a little bit, working, of course, um, and I'll be teaching in the second half of summer too. OERing, I love that. <laughs> we should all OER for summer. <laughs> working, enjoying the backyard, air conditioning, prototyping, catching up outdoor movies, being a dog dad. These are so fun. Teaching, camping, outreach. Oh, of course the dog dad is Jeff. <laughs> leash training my cat, that's awesome. I wish I could leave, leash train my cats. Instead, I put them in a stroller to take them for walks because they just won't walk on the leash. Watching bird feeders. Something new came up, but I missed where it went. So reading, I think that's it. This is awesome. It sounds like we have very relaxing and also productive summers ahead of us. 
So I am going to go ahead and hand this off to Spencer for an operations update. Awesome, thank you, Tiffany. And I want to know the secret sauce that it takes to leash train a cat, because that sounds incredibly difficult. <laughs> um, hey, everybody, my name's Spencer, I'm in Colorado. I work at the Colorado Department of Higher Ed, and I am here to give you some updates on the organizing process, um, especially for those of you who may be joining us for the first time or maybe haven't heard our, our recap here. Just wanted to give you a quick overview of how the conference is organized and how it is a very uh, community oriented process. Um, so the 2021 operating structure, you can see here, we're entering our, our second year of this commitment among kind of four different partner organizations and many, many volunteers. Um, those partner organizations are listed there. OpenStax um, as kind of our fiscal manager, Spark with our operational and logistical leads, and then the University System of Maryland and the Colorado Department of Higher Education also supporting the conference to bring these past two years to fruition. Um, so we had a great time last year and again, building that, that vision for this, this second year um, through the two-year commitment. Um, and that includes all things from running the conference to strategic planning um, and the work with various committees, including the steering committee and many community driven processes, uh, one of which includes this type of um, meeting that we hold regularly. So it's great to see kind of repeat, repeat um, colleagues and, and new faces every time we do it. Um, with regard to the committee work that's happening like I said, many, many volunteers helped this conference to, to take place and to, um, to be executed. And um, it takes various, various uh, committees to, to make that happen. So you have listed here some of the committees by theme. So we have a program committee, which is in charge of the um, call for proposal process, um, Div diversity, equity, and inclusion committee, always bringing a lens and, and really a spirit of diversity equity and inclusion to all dimensions of the conference. I'd say that a lot of committees focus on that, but this committee is specifically charged with that, that responsibility. We have a communications committee who's done a fantastic job with branding, outreach, um, and marketing. And then we have a strategic planning committee thinking about now and the future of this conference. So there are more committees going to be formed this summer. There are ongoing volunteer opportunities. If you are interested or people you know are interested, please, please get involved. Um, I am now going to hand it off to Winnie to tell us a little bit more about Conference 2021. Winnie. Great. Um, so of course, uh, registration is open for the uh, Open Education 2021 conference. Um, we sent out a save the date last month on October for October 18th, 20 um, to the 22nd of 2021. Um, so the conference will be then, and it will be a virtual conference. Um, the rates are open, and this the rates are the exact same as last year. The standard is $75, and the student. Um, is $25. And of course, scholarships are available. We don't want um, finances to be a barrier to your attendance at the conference. So uh, if you would like, scholarship applications are due on August 13th for priority consideration. Um, and we'll go ahead and post a link to the scholarship application in the chat. The next is the call for proposals. Uh, the call for proposals has been out for a while now and the submissions are due June 21st, so right around the corner about 10 days at 11.59 p.m. Uh, we encourage everyone to read the call for proposals in its entirety before submitting any um, proposal. It'll tell you everything you need to know, guidelines, requirements, um, things you have to do after you've been accepted. We want to especially encourage students K through 12 and international submission. So if you fall under one of those categories, please, please apply um, or submit a proposal. And if you know colleagues or friends who are in the open field who would be great um, proposal, would, would, would submit an excellent proposal, please encourage them to apply to the conference. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to Nicole. 
Excellent. Well, thanks so much, Winnie and everybody. Um, and uh, yes, thank you, Wendy, for, for uh, answering that in the chat about the due date for the call for proposals. So uh, we, at these meetings, it's very important to us to just create opportunities to gather feedback from community members using Mentimeter as a tool to um, uh, gather additional voices into the planning process. And specifically today, we have a couple of questions that we'd like to ask that are relevant to the, the long-term strategic planning process that's been going on. Spencer, Spencer mentioned it earlier. And this process uh, started in, in March and April. It's run by uh, one of our committees. And the goal process is to figure out sort of what comes next for the conference once the two year period that uh, the organizations that Spencer mentioned uh, hand off the conference at, at, at the end of the year. And the strategic planning process is developing, you know, goals, mission, vision, and a governance structure to carry the conference forward. And the process has uh, spent a lot of time thinking through things uh, uh, in terms of possibilities. You know, the possibilities are really endless <laughs> given the open education field and how much it's grown and how much potential there is. And uh, just all of the great ideas that have come up at last year's conferences and this, this year's meeting or these, this year's meetings about what the conference could be. And in the process, in, in order to sort of start getting down to brass tacks and narrowing things down to what is really the crux of the Open Education Conference, the Strategic Planning Committee has sort of flipped those questions head a little bit and is trying to really get at, uh, you know, what is, what is it about the Open Education Conference that makes it what it is and makes it uh, sort of the, um, you know, perhaps not unique, but important uh, uh, piece of the community that it is. So we're going to ask you two questions through Mentimeter. If you're not already in Mentimeter, uh, you should be able to join um, through the, the link in the chat. And uh, the first, so and these questions are meant to be provocative. <laughs> so um, uh, I guess take, take that with a grain of salt. So the first question is, what do you get out of attending an ed conference that you don't get anywhere else? So this is, you know, maybe for people who've attended before, you may not have an answer to this question uh, and that's okay. Um, but if you do, we'd really love to hear what, what you have to say. So what do you out of attending the open ed conference that you don't get anywhere else? Hope to attend, haven't yet? Awesome, so glad that you're here. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. So legitimacy. Interesting. Um, certainly, you know, being able to present at a central conference, we hear that a lot from people that that's helpful. Excitement for student engagement. Absolutely. We're really working hard on that this year. Uh, opportunity to connect with people, new ideas, support from others dealing with OER, chance to discuss open ed research, us to a specific part of the open education world, absolutely. It's not the only open education conference or the only space to connect, but it is, um, it is one. Support for advocacy, peers and networking, and you should be able to enter multiple if, if you wish to. I'm gonna pause this real quick. So I'm seeing a lot of like networking, practice using OER resources, <sighs> support from others. Sharing the work, absolutely. A reinforced love of cheetahs, I concur, I concur. And for those who don't know what that means, uh, uh, the debate over whether crunchy or puffy Cheetos is better was uh, a giant inside joke at last year's conference and I think is certain to continue this year.
Wonderful. Well, thanks for all of these answers. This is very helpful. In addition to you know, seeing your responses here and reacting to them, these will be provided to the Strategic Planning Committee as additional input for the process. So we're going to move on to our next question, which is uh, meant to be provocative. So uh, we're asking the question this way, what is lost if the Open Education Conference does not continue past 2021? So if we were to stop planning anything right now and just hold the 2021 conference and that's it, what would be lost? What would you want that you couldn't have next year? if it weren't to happen. And again, this is completely hypothetical and meant to provoke um, you know, answers. Great, so momentum, pedagogical heritage. That's such an interesting way of looking at it. Thank you for submitting that. Um, shared implicit knowledge the opportunity to work with such fantastic people. I agree with that one. Progress toward national narrative standards community, a welcoming and recruiting space for new OER educators and advocates, professional development, a network, new leaders. We'll not have a focused conference for OER. Conversations on the state of the field. Alternatives to proprietary educational resources. I'm gonna pause this in a little bit to make sure we get everything. A conference to validate and give people credibility in their work. That theme has come up a couple of times. Collaboration leading to progress. Sense of belonging. These are all really great, thank you. I think we just have one other one that I'm trying to get at before. And do feel free to put your notes in the chat if you didn't get a chance to submit it through Mentimeter. So affordable professional development was the last one, I think. And I haven't seen one submitted in a while. So I think maybe we can go ahead and wrap up, but if there's anything anybody would like to submit, please do it now. A space for people of all different backgrounds to advance professionally, I love that. Unity, interesting. All right, well, thank you for submitting this again. These will be shared with the Strategic Planning Committee for consideration. And uh, I'm going to pass it over to David for one last opportunity to share input before we wrap up. Sounds good. So this is a bit more of an open-ended one. Um, what's what's going on in everybody's lives? What, you, what's, what are you curious about with the conference or is there anything that's fun that's happened for you recently that you'd love to share with everybody? Um, kind of a bit of a toast yourself moment if there's something cool that you've done you wanna share uh, or if you have any questions for anybody, go ahead, pull them out. I know it's a gorgeous day out here. So I know uh, I'd love to share that it's a nice day and I'm excited for the weekend for the first time in a little while because it's been really, really rainy here for a little bit. Um, H5P is becoming a thing in OER. Cool. Um, I, I don't fully know what H5P is, but that sounds like it's a, a cool thing that's that's becoming a thing in OER. So that's cool to hear. Starting an OER professional development series at your college. Nice. That's actually really cool. Um, that's always a fun way to like get colleagues involved and really build a lot of skills there. Glad that we're in a better place than 2020. Same, honestly. Like it. It is starting to feel really good. I know um, the, the vaccination timelines here where I'm at is, is getting kind of pushed up a little bit. So I'm actually thinking I might be able to get my second dose relatively soon. And there's a, uh, a thing coming closer to the end for me. 
uh, how to make HIV Harry Potter five a thing in OER. Harry Potter five, okay, that not what I expected, but you know what? Open sourced um, wizarding novels could always be a really interesting idea. Um, H5P.org is an alternative to SCORM packages and such. Oh, interesting. Uh, lots of planning for new open education projects. Nice. Regional conferences was great. How, how do we connect them to the international or in the national level? That's an interesting one. Uh, reading some good books that seem uh, that it, uh, it seems like. Um, virtual learning and how is virtual learning changed and advanced OER? That is a really interesting question. Um, I know it's at my institution here in, in Alberta, there's definitely been a, an increased awareness of OER and a general knowledge base of it's just been increasing. And I think that might be uh, evidence of a bit of a larger trend with the move to online conversations of OER have been really pushed broader to the forefront and people are kind of acknowledging that they do have a, uh, a really important space in our, in our learning. Um, I read the uh, the I'm reading the Infinity Game by Simon Sinek, and my brain automatically autocorrected that to uh, Shrek. So uh, if there's anybody else who's rewatching the Shrek movies, I think that is a very uh, fun thing to do over the summer. I would highly suggest. Uh, did anyone get to Alex's question above both the, uh, the proposal review process and whether or not it's double blind? Um, I believe you don't get a notification of the name of the author uh, of the uh, proposal so when you're reviewing it. So you will get the information of what's in the proposal, but not the actual uh, author name themselves. Also, uh, my time to showcase my cat in her fabulous Open Ed 2020 hoodie. Uh, it is actually uh, new and refurbished. A bit of the, uh, the backing came off, so we just finished um, embroidering it again. So it's a one of the kind self hand embroidered open ed sweater um, and she absolutely loves it. This is Lucy. OER in learning and development, press books, need to regenerate support from administrative leadership because there's been a lot of movement in provost presidents. That's a really interesting concept. Yeah, does anybody have ideas for how to engage a lot more academic leadership in stuff like this conference? Seems like, high, uh, like Hire has a lot of stimulus money. What will we do with all of it? Um, learning experience design. Now I want Cheetos. Lots of stuff on everybody's mind. It's really good to see that uh, that everybody's engaging with everything and, and people are getting excited for, for what's to come. Lots of good questions in here too. Does look like the, the new um, the new answers are slowing down a little bit. Ooh, what's the next food debate? How can we make Discord spicier? Uh, my go-to is maybe some like uh, uh, some uh, cayenne pepper is my go-to for making things spicier, but I do have some very nice hot sauce. Um, so I could just pour that on my keyboard before I type anything in Discord, if that'll help out. Uh, but I think, ooh, a hot sauce showcase, that could be good. We could do, I know we had a cooking competition a competition last year. We could always do a um, an open ed hot sauce um, challenge where almost like, a, like hot ones or something. Alberta's Canada's Texas. No, it it is in, in a lot of different ways. Um, yeah. <laughs> peeps. Uh, I'm not sure if that's peeps is in people or peeps is in those like marshmallow candies. Um, I've never once been able to actually like eat a peep. I'm not sure if they're actually meant to be edible, um, but I do know they hold its cultural importance to some parts of the United States. So I will not, I, I will refrain from my, my critique of those. Um, more co-construction with learners. That is something that I think is also super awesome uh, that could be happening. I've been really looking at like um, co-constructing uh, like texts as a like, as actually a form of assessments for courses. I know I actually saw a really cool um, uh, panel last year at Open Ed talking about using a course to co-create the resource for the next iteration of that course, which I thought was a really, really cool idea. Yeah, it's looking like there's a ooh, pineapple on pizza debate that that could get a little bit too intense. I know there's some uh, some very, very strong opinions on that one. Um, fun fact, pineapple on pizza and Hawaiian pizza was actually invented in Canada. And I don't believe there's really much 
connection to Hawaii other than the fact that it has pineapple on it? Because I believe it was Greek immigrants in Toronto that invented pineapple and pizza as a concept. Um, so really just an interesting roundabout way to get onto there. OER Q&A and analytics. I don't know, that, that could be an interesting concept, just like a general Q&A about how to get involved in OER or how to create an OER, that could be interesting. Oh, quality assurance. My immediate thought was question and answer. <laughs> but how to, how to kind of set quality assurance and measure analytics for OER, that could be a very interesting topic to, to delve in, yeah. But it looks like things are sl slowing down a little bit, so I will pass it off to uh, Aisha for kind of a bit of information about what's going to go on for the next meeting and, and what to expect. Hi, everyone. Thank you all for coming out to our monthly community meeting. Don't forget to follow the conference on social media. The at is Hey Open Ed, and you can follow it on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And make sure whenever you tweet about the conference, use the official hashtag OpenEd21. Our next meeting will be taking place July 9th from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern, and we look forward to seeing you all there. Thank you all for coming out today and giving amazing feedback, and we appreciate it all, and we hope to see you all there. <laughs>